be an American I want to say what I got to say I want to be an American In the land of the free I want to be an American It's right for me Hello Lincoln Hello Dixie Hello hot dog Hello baseball, hello Broadway, hello, 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 I want to be an American, I be an American. in the land of the free, in the land of the free. I want to be an American, it's right for me, it's right for me, in America, it's right for me. when it gets this hot. I can't stand wearing all these clothes. They cling to every curve on my body. I just want to go home and rip off everything I'm wearing. Throw up in a window. Stop! I, I can't bake anymore! <laughs> Did you hear? Miss Courtney has been promoted. She is no longer the principal. No. And I heard that the new principal is really tough. He used to be a Marine. He had to be tough growing up his name like Marine. <laughs> That's United States Marines. I probably invaded one of your countries. <laughs> Oh, it's hotter in here than it is in the hall. Mr. Brown, how can you wear a shirt and a tie in this weather? I found that if you concentrate on your work, you can ignore the temperature. Okay, let's start class. Uh, <laughs> Last time I saw legs like that was a Miss Teenage Russia. Of course, hers had more hair. Heat never bothers Gobble. I leave underwear in freezer overnight. <laughs> the next day, I just sit here and wait for my shorts to thaw out. What's that? Uh, this portable fan. I brought enough for the whole class. Oh, oh Nikolai, how thoughtful. <laughs> Nikolai, you are truly kind. You are truly considerate. $7.99 each. You are truly a sleazeball. We wouldn't even need your stupid fans if that air conditioner worked. Look, I'll go to our new principal after class and see if I can get it fixed. Good, because once there was a terrible heat wave in my village of Hosha, but school was not dismissed until the teacher died. Died? Oh, yes, but you're not even close. First, your eyes will start to bug out like they're doing right now. Then your tongue will start to hang out like this. <gasps> I think I'd better go see him now. Come in! Is my swordfish straight? I don't know. Was he in La Cajo Finn? <laughs> well, I fought that baby for 12 hours off the coast of Baja. Who are you? I'm Taylor Brown. Little old for an Eagle Scout, aren't you? Uh, I teach the citizenship class. Citizenship class, huh? Well, personally, I think we ought to spend more money on border guards. <laughs> but if you're going to let these people in, at least we ought to teach them why this is the greatest country in the world. I'm F. Jerry Bud McPherson. <laughs> or as far as this guy is concerned, Mr. Death. <laughs> I used to do some fishing in uh, North Dakota. Oh, freshwater fishing? Yep. That's for candy butts. <laughs> and you don't approve of candy butts? No, sir. Nor do I approve of teachers who run their class like a summer camp. What are you talking about? Well, look at the way you're dressed. I I'm dressed this way because we're in the middle of a heat wave and the air conditioner in my class is broken. You're supposed to sweat when you learn. <laughs> if education was easy, our schools would be filled with children. <laughs> Strike that. 
Mr. McPherson, I can't teach unless I have a new air conditioner in my class. Based on your file, I don't see that you teach at all. You don't have a study plan. You don't follow the curriculum. You don't give weekly tests. All your students need is a pina colada and you got Club Med. <laughs> That's not fair, Mr. McPherson. My students learn. Oh, yeah? You couldn't prove it by this? Well, if you don't like the way I teach, then maybe you should find another teacher. Yeah, maybe I should. <laughs> Go ahead, F, because I just quit. That's fun! <laughs> Only my wife calls me F! <laughs> Everywhere we go, candy butts. <laughs> so when do we get our new air conditioner? When the cows come home. <laughs> In my village, that was usually six o'clock. <laughs> Good work. What happened, Mr. Brown? You're not getting a new air conditioner, you're getting a new teacher. What? I can't work for that man. You can't quit, Mr. Brown. You are the best teacher we've ever had. Yes, you are the only one who... Uh, Laszlo, what are you smiling at? <laughs> the best part of my shorts, just defrosted. <laughs> Mr. Brown, please don't quit. We'd rather be hot. Mr. Brown, do not be hasty. Robert is right. Before you make a decision as drastic as this, you need to achieve inner peace and total relaxation. Ali, please. Empty your head of everything. I do it all the time. <laughs> Relax. Think of a peaceful place. Your mind must become a total blank. Hey, it works. What works? <laughs> I'll go talk to Mr. McPherson. Oh, Mr. McPherson, I, I wanted to talk to you. Oh, yeah, I wanted to talk to you, too. You see, I, I think what happened before, I, I got a little carried away, okay, and I just okay. feel like... You go first. What I wanted to say is, uh, I think we got off to a bad start, and I want to apologize for what I said. Ah, oh, that's very big of you. What is it you wanted to say to me? Will you need any boxes to clear your stuff out of my school? I thought you accepted my apology. I did. I also accepted your resignation. Your replacement will be here tomorrow night. It was nice working with you. I can't believe Mr. Brown won't be back. Believe it. I spoke to him today. He already got another job, coaching at a private school. Oh. Good evening. Uh, I'm Mr. McPherson, your new principal. And I just wanted to... What the hell are you staring at? You have something on your head. It looks like a little cap made of hair. That's a toupee. Well, if you had to pay for that, then he was cheated. <laughs> all right, all right, let's have a little quiet in the ranks here. Now, you're getting a wonderful new teacher, starting tonight. We do not want a wonderful teacher. We want Mr. Brown. We like Mr. Brown. It's Brown or no one. <laughs> this is your new teacher. Your name wouldn't happen to be Brown, would it? On March 9th, 1950... So exciting. I've never taught adult education before. <laughs> you haven't? No, I, I used to teach the second grade. This is my first class of grown-ups. <laughs> I guess I don't have to ask if anyone has to go. <laughs> I'll go if you fake me. Oh, uh, now I know we're all going to be good friends. We already agree on one thing, that the United States is the best place in the whole world. Everything anyone could possibly want is right here. And it's so close I can touch it. <laughs> Oh, will you 
make new ones. Now, tonight we're going to talk about the rights and responsibilities of a good citizen. And what better way to learn than by playing Simon Says? <laughs> Simon Says what? <laughs> well, it's a game. See, you don't do anything unless I say Simon Says first. Now, if you do, you lose and you're out of the game. Isn't it fun? In the rational, we played KGB says. <laughs> Only if you lose, you're out the window. You know, I used to play Simon Says with my second graders. It made learning so much fun. I hear it is very big at Princeton, too. <laughs> okay, Simon Says, everybody stand up. Simon Says. Hands over head. Now, this is just like KGB. <laughs> okay. Hands down. Uh, I didn't say Simon says you all lose. <laughs> I hope this doesn't mean I have to go back to Pakistan. <laughs> okay. Simon says Nikolai must tell me one requirement for being a good citizen. You must know history of the United States. You must understand the meaning of democracy. You must know the government and how it works. Wait, 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 wait. I haven't said Simon Says. Well, what's the difference as long as we understand about being a good citizen? Everybody sit down. <laughs> I said, sit down. You didn't say Simon Says. I'm not falling for that old trick. <laughs> Gentlemen, I am proud of all of you. You are the finest team I have ever worked with. Way to go, guys. <laughs> nice game. You're a jerk. What? We lost, didn't we? Uh, I know how you feel, but it's not winning or losing that counts. It's how you play the game. What a doofus. <laughs> you know what my father says? Do it to them before they do it to you. What's your father do? He's a minister. <laughs> Look, it's only natural that you feel down. But we'll get him next game, won't we, guys? <laughs> I had to take you out of the game, Billy. The other team had a guard who must have been at least, ah, uh, 4'8". <laughs> You're not still mad, are you? Ow! <laughs> Why, you! You're nothing but a bunch of spoiled brats. Now, get in that shower and, and, and soak your heads. <laughs> Mr. Brown? What? Oh, hi, guys. What are you doing here? We stopped by to say hello. Who are they? My old class. I'm not surprised. They look like a bunch of losers. Can I step on him? <laughs> He's always kidding. My star player, Magic Steinberg. Shouldn't you be hitting the shower, Magic? Okay, just don't let me catch you watching. Great kid. Oh, yes. Makes you want to run out and start a family. <laughs> How do you like your new job? How do I like it? I hate it. I hate them. I'm coaching a bunch of garbage pale kids. We feel the same way toward our new teacher as you feel toward them. That bad? This is how bad. She's young, beautiful, has a body that won't quit, and I still want her to leave. You've got to come back, Mr. Brown. I want to come back. But I'm not going to beg Mr. McPherson for my job. But, Mr. Brown, with this woman teaching our class, we'll never become citizens. I just can't come crawling back. We understand. I don't. <laughs> Good luck. The one thing I won't give up is my dignity. I thought we told you to use softener when you wash the towel. Now fold the ends together like this. 
And if you do it correctly, you'll have a hat just like Christopher Columbus did when he discovered America. This is why I wanted to become an American, to work with glue. Now, now. Oh, I hope I'm not interrupting. I just wanted to see how you're doing. What are you doing? Well, we're learning about Christopher Columbus. By making hats? Like yours. Only ours is not made of hair. <laughs> uh, can I see you outside? Well, I, I'm a little... Now! <laughs> Listen, dear. As someone who wants to see you succeed at this school, can I give you some advice? Lose the hats. Oh, now, don't you be a Mr. Sourpuss. <laughs> They're visual aids. Hey, there's been a really big breakthrough on the visual aid front. It's called a book. <laughs> These people are adults, and they learn by reading. No one has ever complained about my teaching methods before. It's probably because they are too high on glue to know the difference. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. McPherson, but... I just cannot work in this negative atmosphere. I'm going someplace where they appreciate me. Try Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. <laughs> okay, okay. The New Year's Eve party's over. Get rid of the hats. Where's Miss Puckett? I'm teaching the class now, and we're going to get back to basics. Now, I know that all of you come from different backgrounds, rich in culture and tradition. Well, I want you to forget all that crapola. You're in America now. And I spell that with a capital A. It's a proper noun. I spell it with a capital A, too. Well, my A is bigger than yours. Okay, what were we studying? The founding of America. Oh, that's good. Well, I ought to know a little bit about that. That's because he was probably there. <laughs> Watch it. I've got the number of immigration. <laughs> okay, where was I? Oh, yeah. America was founded by a small but dedicated band of English-speaking pioneers. But didn't Columbus discover America? Not the good part. <laughs> Mr. Brown said the Vikings came here first. By accident. I'm talking about people who knew what they were doing. <laughs> Mr. Brown said that first Americans were Indians. Nikolai's talking about the oh, 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 Indians. <laughs> Not the Ram Sita Ram, Ram Sita Ram Indians. Oh, I knew that. And did you know that the American Indians taught the pilgrims to fertilize their fields with fish? Mr. Brown taught us that also. Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown. He was the best teacher we ever had. Oh, he sounds like it. <laughs> Mr. Brown really cared about us, and we miss him. What am I supposed to know about it? Well, you're the principal. I'm sure you'll do whatever you think is best. Yes, I'm sure I will. Mr. Brown. Yeah, we thought you were never coming back. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all because of Mr. McPherson. He was open-minded and gracious enough to accept my apology and ask me back. He is a man's man and a great principal. <laughs> well, huh, those are very nice words, Mr. Brown. They should be. You wrote them yourself. Oh, I don't want to hear that here now. Uh, you kept your part of the bargain. I'm going to keep mine. Right this way. Uh -huh. All right. Thanks, Mr. McPherson. It takes a big man to compromise. I'm not that big, and I'm not compromising. I'm giving you a second chance, which is more than I gave that swordfish hanging on my wall. Remember, Brown, there's a hook in my office with your name on it. <laughs> Finally, some relief.
What a country was saved before a beautifully dressed studio audience. Mm -hmm. Coming up, a terrifying true story. In 1963, a policeman is kidnapped and murdered. 24 years later, the convicted killer is granted parole. The true story of the Onion Field is next here on Channel 5. Thank you.